Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, we've got our Professor Cyprian Edward Ekbo joining us next. He is the Director General, Institute of Law, Research and Development of United Nations in Washington, D.C. He is the Principal Executive Officer, Universal School of Eclectic Analysis, Research and Legal Studies in London, Registrar, International Institute for Humanitarian and Environmental Law. He's also an author six decades a missing president you say why nigeria, why nigeria fails, fails. Yes. why nigeria fails yes. wow well um now we have to talk about how to fix it well first of all i was looking at the entire scenario look the build-up it's, it's another scenario we're focusing on the president the governors electing several people across the country yes. so you i mean having written those books you must have been observing what's been going on and how we're all going on with this process what stands out for you and what do you say? What, what stands out in terms of, you've written about how, why Nigeria yes. fails. Yes. Are there signs, do you see any signs whatsoever that this time we may just get it right? Either from the structure, from the people, or where? Well, I think that uh, if we miss a step, the right approach, uh, Nigeria will move from a failed state status to the collapsed state status. Um, and it's very close. Uh, I think the cap is quite close. And so the, the citizenry... Uh, we have to be very, very cautious this time around, uh, especially during this electioneering process. Uh, they have to be cautious about their choice, and they have to be cautious about um, what their drive, the political drive, is all about. They have to detach from that primitive uh, drive of personal interest and ethnic chauvinism, uh, regional-based uh, 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 politicking to issues of development. And uh, when they understand the problem of Nigeria, is the causal, 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 uh, causal factors of the problem of Nigeria because the leaders and the citizens they detach from issues of development to issue of personality. That is the baseline. That is the foundation of all the crises. So the citizenry have to come to terms that politics is not all about personal interest, it's not all about ethnic and religious best interests, that what we need at this time, at this moment, is to look at an aspect of development. How would, how do, how would a country move from developing or underdeveloped state to developed state? And that has to be driven by ideology that is tied to development. So, in your observations and writings, yes. so is it that what makes or what causes things to fail? Are they not obvious to us all, or is it that we see them, but it's, it's difficult for us to do? What do, you, what do you think of it? Yeah, the whole issues arise from um, an aspect of orientation. We have orientation problem. I, I was talking with a friend yesterday in a program, and they, everyone keeps saying that your problem is corruption, corruption, corruption. That is not a problem. Corruption oh, is the aftermath of the, prob the foundation problem. That is intellectual poverty. Nigeria has a problem of intellectual poverty. Uh, what I mean by intellectual poverty, sometimes when you mention it, even professors, standing members of the academia, believe that it has to do with a college degree. That is not a problem. They will tell you, ah, Nigerians are well educated, they are well positioned in the academic world, and all that. That is not education. Education means having the necessary corporate and public policy experience with character that can enhance development. That means you are properly informed. So the problem we have in Nigeria is that people are not well informed. People are being colleged. And you even see the passion, the penchant for being educated or being, going to school in Nigeria is just to acquire certificate. Mm. Uh, that's where the problem is. So intellectual poverty is a major problem of Nigeria. And it's not going to change easily until we are able to think of how do we fashion out a mechanism that can use orientation, orientation program to change the concept of the people. For example, the you don't read. Hardly you see Nigerian reading. Uh, 
Uh, they are interested in obscene publication. Uh, people cause it big for someone's marriage has fell. All those sort of things. Mm. So you see the level of the mentality. So that is where the problem is. So having a knowledge-based system, Nigeria is not a knowledge-based system, it's an anti-intellectual society. Well, some people would say that as the world develops, you know, there are a lot more distractions now for young people. And, you know, social media can either be a tool for them for, you know, to learn, or it could be a tool of, you know, extreme distraction, depending on how, on how you look at it. Um, we've also seen all manner, even the media, um, we're, not, we're not completely left out. And there are different types of, of media nowadays. But I am wondering, you know, does it have anything to do, because this, this subject of development and democracy oftentimes go hand in hand. Uh, when we were under the military, under the military rule, a lot of people felt that Nigeria's growth was stunted because we are under a military administration. And now, 24 years into a civilian administration, they're wondering what precisely is going on. So do you think that this, this education which you speak of still manifests itself regardless of whether or not it is a democracy or it is a military rule? Yeah, that may correct the misconception. Democracy is not a guarantee for development. That's why you see some countries that are not democracies. Some democracies are uh, fail states. Why some countries or nations that are not democracies are well-developed countries? I don't think, uh, what do you call this country? North Korea is not a democratic nation. Is it a developed country? Uh, of course, you, of course, in technology. Science and technology, that's why they can look at United States face to face and say, oh, you do this, I will release my uh, missile. That's a developed country. It takes knowledge to develop the missiles. That's the knowledge system. Uh, Saudi Arabia is not democracy. It's a developed country. It's a country that you can depend on their GDP. Their GDP growth is good. It's viable. It's credible. It takes care of the, the problems of the country and the citizenry. So the misconception of that democracy guarantees development. No, democracy only guarantees human rights. So that distinction has to be made. That's why it's the best form of government in the world conception, as we see. It guarantees human rights. So, but it doesn't guarantee development. What guarantees development is knowledge-based system. So, but you see the country problem of Nigeria, our hopes, that Nigeria or Nigeria, the, Nigerian, the Nigerian public will one day see or, uh, the first level of development and security has become a euphemism. What's the problem? The problem is because governments and public service is filled up with mediocrity. With mediocrity. And when you have that kind of system, what do you expect from a less knowledge-based system? You don't expect any development because the ideology will be driven by something lower than standard, the world standard or normal standard. Mediocrity drives abnormality. So that's where the problem is. So Nigerians must, have to, must come to that terms. Mm. So where you have people who are not intellectually based people, I'm not talking about college educated. We have to have that distinction. What they look at is someone they will not suspect the superiority of knowledge that can challenge them. They look at loyalty, look at psychovancy. That is the base. And when you operate from that level, you can't have it right. All right, let me bring in our colleagues in Lagos. Yes, thank you, Chamberlain. Professor Cyprian, since you uh, aver that not all democracies guarantee development, and in fact, there are some institutional monarchies that are more developed than uh, some democracies, what do you think would be better suited you know, to guarantee development in Nigeria? What, what form of government? What form of government do you think is suited? Yeah, democracy is fine for every reasonable man. Every reasonable man in this contemporary world. Democracy. 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 Oh, democracy. Okay. But not pseudo democracy. What we have in Nigeria is pseudo democracy. We, do, we are not yet um, developed democracy. 
Nigeria is not a developed democracy. We have pseudo democracy. And that's where the problem is. So how can this uh, pseudo democracy be addressed? Prof, can you hear me? Prof. Can you hear me? Prof. Yes, I can hear you. So how can this pseudo democracy in Nigeria be addressed? Uh, the destiny of Nigerians is in the hands of Nigerians. Uh, but before you get to that, that's why we talk about the issue of orientation. We have an agency like National Orientation Agency, but I don't think it's working. I don't think it's working. Because you first of all have to uh, give people the proper orientation. What development is all about? What are the factors that galvanize what are the factors that enhance? What are the factors that sustain sustainable development? The people must first of all understand that this increases from primitive uh, trajectory and be able to follow the pattern that really guarantees development. Um, I was talking with uh, uh, one uh, Christmas period. Uh, let me give you a scenario. Christmas period. I visited a friend and um, he's a federal court judge. And uh, when I was about leaving there, uh, so I look at the kids. There's a, a, the elder one, the, it's about, I think, final year medical students. So I gave her some money, uh, I think $100. So, and then the second one, the little child, that's not up to, I think she was seven years or so, so seven ages. So I gave her uh, just 1000 naira. Because I look at, uh, you may, she may, you may not need, I uh, have much need of money. And he didn't tell me thank you. So the sister said, ah, why didn't you tell Uncle thank you? He says, for 1,000 naira. Why would I tell him thank you for 1,000 naira? So when I told the pair, and they were laughing, I, all these children are conscious of money. I said, that, that's not supposed to be so. You should be conscious of how to read novels at that level. How to ask questions. How, how do people, how did they develop aeroplane? That's why the children from developed world, how they, that's how they think. That's why you have someone like Elon Musk. That's why you have someone like, uh, what's this guy that's founded Facebook? Zuckerberg. Yeah, uh, so you see the, the orientation rise and rises and stop in money. So you first of all have to bring the consciousness of the people to the fact that that is not what guarantees life and happiness. Mm. What guarantees life and happiness is knowledge-based system and character, just like what Nigerians uh, are after. Nigerians talk too much about personality, especially during the electionary period. Well, uh, well, Prof, I, 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 I wonder if that would be the only problem with, with what you call, I, I wonder what, if that would be the only problem with what you call Nigeria's uh, pseudo-democracy. I'm losing uh, you. Prof, can you hear me? Yes, I wonder if that Pardon? will be. I wonder if that will be, you know, personalities of a concentration on personalities and money factor. I wonder if that will be the only problem with uh, Nigeria's democracy. Uh, some would say that uh, the inability to manage her diversities also constitutes a problem, uh, which also is a base for the continuous call, regardless of administration and republic, for restructuring. Do you see that also? as a stumbling block to, you know, development and Nigeria's particular, uh, peculiar kind of democracy. Yes, that, that lets me come to that. I, uh, I really, I really strongly hold a view that um, I focus on personality instead of issues of development, one of the major co uh, problems of Nigeria. Uh, in fact, it's the central focal force uh, of all the problematic for it. Now, uh, for example, uh, that's what gave me to a book like Six Decades, the Amazing President. I was studying the manifestos of all the current presidential candidates. And I look at it all, and I think some of them uh, map out their uh, manifestos after they uh, declared their intention to become president of the federal people of Nigeria. That alone is the first point of uh, indication of failure. Because you don't uh, de plan uh, presidency after you have made a declaration. You plan presidency years before time. That means you understand the problems of the country and you want to solve it. And you want to uh, help the country because you have studied it before over time 
before you can now come out and say I want to be president. Not a circumstantial um, element, bringing you to become president. And I saw people say traveling outside the country, they want to go and study this after the creation of uh, 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 intentions to become president of the federal government. And that's not a serious country. Our people listen to those people, they are not serious. Now, when I look at it, and that's how I arrived at, uh, what is the former vice president, uh, Tiko Ubaka's uh, five-point agenda. I think that is the only pragmatic, pragmatic development plan we have now. Among all the candidates, I've looked at uh, uh, Chinipu, uh, former governor of Lagos said uh, manifesto. I, I can't distinguish between that of the Moshe Abiola of uh, 1993. That is plagiarism. Uh, and that the world of today is no longer the world of 1993. Uh, it's an advanced technological world right now. We are. It's a digital uh, era. Right now we are. So why did you go and copy something of 1993? Uh, Anti-Diluvian uh, agenda to apply in this contemporary world. So I look at um, uh, Peter Obi and uh, Manifesto, uh, right? Look um, uh, fantastic, uh, but full of um, academic um, ideologies. Yeah. A host of uh, things, issues that you have raised here now, I mean, it's speaking to choices that people need to make and, uh, you know, options that they have to look at. By the way, you may want to uh, kindly uh, avoid uh, rubbing your hand against the microphone on your, on your jacket. So, but the question here now is about leadership, about selecting the right people to do the job that Nigerians need them to do we have to use political platforms. So if you could, you know, in maybe a minute or two, speak to ideological politics in our country today. There is the challenge of choice based on the position of a particular political party. The Third Republic, there are those who would say, perhaps held the most uh, divergent of political views. There were social democrats, there were republicans, it was clear. In the First Republic, we had something similar as well. But today, it would seem like almost all the parties have similar political you know, agendas, political ideologies. Everyone wants to be socialist and all of that. So in terms of getting political ideology that can fit into uh, a national vision, how do you suggest that the political class should go about that? So Nigerians have a choice of this product or that product, as opposed to just a generic one that any one of them will seem to fit the bill. Yeah, oh, first of all, uh, let me correct misconception. Nigeria does not have political ideology, and none of Nigerian political parties have political ideologies. None. Uh, that's why you see people moving from one political party to the other, moving one and that. It's all tied to personal interests, uh, regional best interests, and all sort of uh, mantras. Now, um, before you get the country to evolve to that level of political ideology, which of course drives development, you first of all have to. Uh, start with the mechanism of orientation that we talk about. Uh, we haven't gotten there. But right now, what we can rely on, let's look at the agenda of each of the political parties or each of the politicians. We'll, we'll come to that, that, Prof. I, I want to Just one second. Country. We'll, we'll, I, I we'll to come to that. Just one second, Prof. We'll come to that. But just so Nigerians can know what direction to look at, because as you noted, each of the political parties seem to have a generic um, ideology, so to speak. The only thing different is that of the agenda that each one of these politicians are looking at. But the interesting thing is, in the laws that govern our democracy, no individual should stand for himself. Each individual should come on the platform of a political party, hence underscoring the importance, the crucial importance of political ideology, which we do not have now. But in terms of discovering, or at least charting some form of perspective for Nigerians, what should people be looking out for, especially when it comes to political ideology? I know you said we don't have, but we have some, we have political parties. So what should people be looking out for and what should guide the choice of who they choose as governor or president in the coming election? 
Yeah, you can't put something on nothing and expect it to stand. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Uh, the only thing, a time I've heard something exists in a vacuum, which scientifically uh, people look at it and say, ah, is this really true? Is the story you read in the book of, in the, uh, the biblical Genesis, uh, that the, uh, the world was void and then something all of a sudden it comes to, it came to exist. So I haven't heard of anything being placed in a vacuum before. So you don't have political ideology, you don't have. So right now you have to work with what you have. And that is what may launch in political ideology. And uh, the book I write called Shackles, um, the uh, proclivities and the root cause of Nigerian per perennial failure, uh, really, really give a solution to this issue we're talking about, how to get there. Uh, when you read it, you know, and Nigerians read it, the problem of Nigerians, uh, they hardly read. That's the truth. Uh, even the political leaders, the people in governments, they don't even read letters written to them. And uh, that's very, very unfortunate. And uh, but if we can start now, before the new generation comes in, uh, maybe we may not be the beneficiaries. Uh, maybe the new generation may be the beneficiary. We can start now to uh, install, in, 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 uh, uh, get the orientation across to the incoming, uh, the younger ones and all that, we may be able to get it right one day. But for now, let's work with what we have. Okay, Prof, no on that it same issue. Among but, the political parties. I appreciate, you know, the position that you've held now, but, you, you started something out earlier about the leadership question. And the natural question that came to my mind, interestingly, we were having a conversation around uh, leadership choices just before we came on air. And one of the examples that, was, that we gave among ourselves here in the studio is, you know, when you see someone driving, you question the way the person is driving until you get behind the wheel. Then you discover that he has the brake failure, the, the, the rear view mirror is not working, the indicators are not working, the steering is faulty, the gearbox is faulty and all of that. So, but in terms of this next election, we are planning to recruit people who are just showing us their resumes. We don't know whether or not they will do well. We are literally taking a risk employing any one of them. What should Nigerians be looking out for in the choices they are about to make? There are 18 presidential candidates and countless political parties, you know, vying for a, a good number of uh, governors, people vying for the office of governor across all 36 states in these choices. Because Nigerians will literally be taking a risk either employing a new one or re, uh, renewing the license to continue the job they're doing as governors. What should Nigerians look out for in a potential leader? Yes, I have already made a reference at the national level. I, I won't talk about governors because I don't talk about what I haven't under, understood, it, what I haven't analyzed. I, I didn't go to each of the states to understudy the programs of each of the governors or governorship candidates. And I, but I know that if you can fix it at the national level, at, uh, it's like a vibration. Before you know it, it's spiral, and across the country, everything okay. will change, the narrative will change. So right now, as I said, let's leave political parties aside. I'm not a politician. So let's leave political parties aside. Yes, Prof. Let's now, talk leadership. Sorry, sorry to jump in. Let's yes, talk sure. leadership as we Thank wind you. down. Yes. When you say to come six in. decades of a missing president, yes. what does that mean? Yeah, for the past 60 years, what has made Nigeria fail, uh -huh. that book gives you the narratives of it. From 1960 independent to the present day, each of the political military regime political military regime and democrat, uh, democratic uh, uh, administration. It gives you each of the factors that contribute to the failure of the Nigerian society of today. And that's why we now look at the solution. I say, why do you look at the solution? We are not politicians. You are, you are not a politician, I'm not. So uh, we, can, we can do it. We can only contribute through electionary vote. That's the best we can do. So let's look at it. What do we have now on ground? I said, let's look at the manifestos, this uh, uh, governance work agenda of each of the presidential candidates and see which one can really, really address the Nigerian uh, perennial problem of the moment. Now, uh, I was able to arrive at that Atiku Bubaka's five-point agenda. That is the current problem of Nigeria. So, That's what he addressed. So well, what is it about his agenda that other, other parties or other candidates they don't, don't have, have one way or the they other? Don't have so, they don't have the same mechanism. The, his agenda is, uh, is, it encompasses element of pragmatism. Element of pragmatism, not, Uver, not um, a Uveria kind of agenda. The problem is 
we should be talking about if he becomes president, how do we hold him responsible to fulfill that obligation? That's what we should be talking about. But that can address the current Nigerian problem, the insecurity issue. I've seen it, the unity problem of unity, which are the current problem of Nigeria, the problem of education, economic dynamism, and uh, uh, the issue of the rule of law. Very fundamental. One of the basis, one of the factors, the causal factors to Nigerian failure, very fundamental, so, is rule of law, abuse on the rule of law. So when you then talk about six decades of a missing president, why Nigeria fails, did you then factor in, um, I mean, when we had the regions were really strong, many always talked about how there was a lot of growth at that time, then much later after that, things tanked. So would you still say that at that point, even though they say we did a lot better in terms of the economy, education, we still failed at that? Yeah, I address that equally. There was some level of failure. And that's why you didn't have it. Uh, a, a continuing, uh, that pattern didn't continue uh, because it couldn't be sustained. It couldn't be sustained. But I have uh, provided solutions. Uh, and uh, right. that uh, TICUS 5.0 agenda is also trying to work towards that solution. So the problem is how do we get this to be implemented? Well, because we have a lot of lofty ideas sometimes from some people. I remember the 2014, the National Convert, uh, uh, was said by President Gulag Jonathan, the then president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There were some very good things like that. That like brought the entire Nigerians, sit, sat down together and said, this is our problem. But it was abandoned. So well, we'll, um, to look at how do we get the implementation to come to the service, to come to materialization of it. I think that Tiko Worker's agenda addressed that. Well, problem I, 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 I know you've also, federalism. I know you also might have heard when people say that, look, a president is not just a president. What makes them succeed is the quality of people that are around them. So if other political parties, other candidates have quality people around them, they will equally succeed, perhaps even do better than the ones that other people thought would do better. But we'll have to go at this point in time. Uh, and thank you for coming on, Professor Cyprian Edward Egbo, Director General, Institute of Law, Institute of Law Research, Research and Development. Development of United Nations in the US, author, Six Decades of a President, Why Nigerians Feel. Uh, thank you for coming.